live from Cape Breton. It's the Guitar Show with your host, Dylan Doe. Hey, how's it going? Hope everybody's having a good Thursday. Welcome to the Guitar Show. We got a really exciting episode up tonight. Um, first things first, I'd like to thank Ripple Effects and uh, Cape Breton Live TV for bringing me on the, the team. Uh, I greatly appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to our future together. And uh, it's also a really exciting episode because I have my very first guitar guest coming live from Cape Breton Island. I got my good pal, Mr. Brody Bootlier. Welcome, Brody, to the live stream. You there, bro? I'm here. Can you hear me? There he is. What's going on, man? <laughs> Uh, Chilling. <laughs> Same thing I'm doing. Playing guitar. Going wacky. Slowly. Shack wacky. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the guitar show, man. Yes, my pleasure. Appreciate it. Yeah. Lots of uh, quarantining and guitar playing and guitar related projects from what I hear. Yeah, yeah, you got to keep busy somehow, and music's definitely the way to do that, whether it be you're playing it or musical projects like this bad boy. Brought her back to life. Oh, yeah. So I've been playing yeah, it. Gee, man, that guitar got, it's got some history, that baby. Yeah, one of my first guitars, so it's good to be back in action. Yeah. How long would you say, how long ago since you got that guitar? Jesus, I think be... I got a guitar probably in grade seven, so I would have been like <laughs> thirteen years old or something like that. Yeah, it was my first real ripper yeah, we'll guitar that was worthy. Yeah. <laughs> so there's yeah. a there's a lot of playtime, a lot of wear and tear on this guitar. You know, I learned how to play on this guitar. So once I got other instruments like the Gibson Les Paul, Martelli, and all that. This kind of kind of sat in the case, unfortunately. But you know, that's just the way she goes when you get better instruments. But I really always loved this guitar. But the the electronics were going in it. The pickups were I don't know if it was spilled beer or sweat or whatever it might have been. But you know, she just wasn't playing up to snuff. So you know, she collected dust for a lot of years, and I was I was out of the country and stuff for a while. Anyway, I got back here, and yeah. for during this quarantine, I looked at it, and I said, you know what? That's going to be my project. So I stripped her down. Yeah, yeah it's a good feeling, uh, freshening up something that means a lot to you or, you know, holds a kind of a special place in your heart, and I know a lot of guitars well, do for a lot of guitars. Exactly. I could have, for the money I put into it and time and effort and whatever, I could have just bought a new guitar, but you know, this was to me it was worth the to put everything <laughs> back into it, right? Because yeah, it's giving you got nothing time on your hands. Exactly. <laughs> it was a learning curve, that's for yeah. sure. I knew I had to change my strings in the odd bit, but now I know a hell of a lot more about the guitar inside and out. <laughs> well, yeah. We're already getting comments that people want to see that acts up close. Oh yeah. Should well, we make them wait. <laughs> we'll make them wait. We're, we're gonna we're gonna break down the 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 SG that Brody uh, restored um, in a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do here tonight is um, we're talking about uh, we're highlighting three guitarists, and uh, these three guitarists have one main main thing in common, but uh, they also have their own unique style um, and uh, are big big legends in the guitar game. Uh, and uh, they're all related to Ozzy Osbourne in one way or another. Um, Mr. Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath. And we got Randy Rhodes, who played with Quiet Riot and Ozzy Osbourne. And um, we also got our man Zach Wilde, Black Label Society. Ozzy Osbourne and also Pride and Glory. Some pretty serious guitar. guitar. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're Ripper. Uh, yeah, we've been listening to them for years. but. Uh, but I think it's time to rip out a tune. What do you say? Might give as well. Old SG, uh, give her a run, bud. Give her a run. Give her a tune. <laughs> 
All right, we're going to go with some, some Iomi straight off the bat. We'll go with some Snowblind. Thank <laughs> you. 
Gotta go a little Iomi on the end there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Snow Bun. That's, that's a kick ass uh, track. Big time. Tony Iommi, legend. The riff master himself. Yeah, and that's one of the songs that I find is a riff. It's just slow chugging, classic Iomi. Yeah. The fact that he uses like totally. chords in it. You know, you're in your your basic power chord. Then he goes into a C and a D, which is like yeah. Is yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not too so often a C major and a D major chord in a metal song. Exactly, but I guess when you're when you're making it up as you go, and there is no metal, so there's there's no way to do it right around. Yeah. You. What do you want? That's right, man. Tony Iommi, the godfather of metal, as exactly. he's known as. Man, that guy's been ripping around. Uh, he was born in Birmingham, England, in uh, 48. So he's, he's been around for a bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think he's about 72 and, uh, or something now. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's an old fella. And uh, he still rips her, man. They're still playing and shit. But, I mean, uh, I've actually got... This is a gift. Um, this is one of Tony Iommi's picks from a Black Sabbath concert. Your good friend Glenn Suggett from Edmonton gave that to me. Yeah. Slick. Slick. Pretty good guest. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use it to play this one song, and then it's going to go back up on the shelf, never to be touched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Until I so I don't wear off the, uh, the signature on the back. You know what I mean? Yeah. The tune I'm going to play. This song is uh, got a badass bass wah solo at the start of it that uh, <laughs> it is awesome. I'm not going to do the bass part thing. I thought about doing the wah on the bass and then switching guitars, but um, we're going we're gonna to stick to just playing straight guitar. This is NIB, Black Sabbath. <laughs> Thank you. 
See if I can get the comments up here so I can see what's going on. Oh, yeah. What are the people saying out there? Is there any uh, questions, comments? Um, Ron is saying, great job. Wow. Great job. I loved it. The boys are ripping it. Nigel saying, hey, boys. Hey, boys. And Nigel, Nigel appreciates the metal. Oh, yeah. Darlene DeVoe says, hello, Dylan. Hello, Darlene. And Kelly's dying to see that axe close up. Well, Kelly, you're in luck because uh, our next line of business is actually uh, talking about the restoration of the Epiphone SG that Brody is holding there. Um, that bad boy went from glossy cherry red to completely stripped. That's close up. And now it's stained chocolate brown. Yes, she. 
She started her life as the your your classic cherry. Um, oh yeah. She, you see, I'm on my long McQuaid. Yeah, legendary. You know. And now there's nothing that you've ever seen there. <laughs> it's vintage <laughs> as. Yeah. So basically, what was on the guitar before was it was a veneer, and that's just basically yeah. a. a a very thin piece of wood over top of the actual wood and then a heavy polyurethane clear coat. So over time, this thing got a lot of abuse and it got chipped up and instead of chipping and wearing like a normal piece of wood, when it's a poly finish, it's, I don't know, it just cracks. It doesn't, doesn't age well. So I figured yeah, I'd I know. put it back to the straight mahogany and stain it and just give it a real, like an oil finish so it has a real look and it's going to it's gonna wear over time like a guitar should, you know? Show its character. Yeah, and it'll be yeah it's add some character, for sure. Yeah, but, don't uh, forget the classic belt buckle, the belt buckle wear back here. Not yeah, this well, in particular, but. this is actually still has a rash from... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can see it. I could have sanded it all the way up, but I just. <laughs> but um. Oh yeah. So the so only the minor way, imperfection. The only way to get that veneer off was with not with paint stripper. Uh, I had to use a heat gun and uh, a putty knife. So you heat up the finish. Just and jam, jam the knife under, and slide it right off. So. Yeah. It was, it was quite the process. It lost, uh, <laughs> it lost a lot of weight. It got a bit thinner. And then after that, yeah, there was days and days and days of sanding. So, again, that was quite the process. Uh, it was definitely a lot more than what I thought it was going to be. But once you got yeah. took the heat gun to the guitar, you're into it. There's no, <laughs> there's no turning back. So definitely. How how many days would you say you spent just sanding it and like like stripping it down? You know. Well, I got the uh, with the heat gun. Uh, I got the veneer off and probably well, I'd say four hours, and then yeah, probably yeah. another eight hours overall of just sanding it by hand because you have to go from really aggressive like an eighty grit, sixty grit sandpaper just to get all the junk out of there. Get down to the actual yeah. grain, down to the mahogany, because there was glue in it and everything, right? So, and then uh, you got to bring it back. I brought it to about 220 before I started staining it. And yeah, I mean, the top of the guitar is not too bad. The back, the neck, it's just the little bits, like in the horns, you know. Obviously, yeah, the tricky, top. tricky to get through spots. Yeah, that was that yeah. would have been the most difficult parts, but. uh Again, the, the whole guitar was stripped down to nothing but wood, so it wasn't working around anything. I didn't touch the fretboard. I taped that off and left that. But, yeah, yeah. I went with uh, you... a dark dark stain, so I used it. was called Espresso, and then I mixed it with ebony just to yeah. give it like, – it looks black probably from here, but if I put the light on it here. I get it kind of – yeah, bring it nice and close to the camera there with the light. Oh yeah. I know yeah, that see. shows the the dark dark brown and the. For sure. Yeah. So. She's all dark. Oh, it goes really good with the creamy, with the creamy uh, pick guard and hardware that you picked for it too. Yeah. Well, that was kind of. I was gonna go with a super vintage vibe with it. Um, yeah. And again. I couldn't find the pick guard that I wanted, so I just made I made the pick guard, which was a which was a process yeah, in itself. Cool. So big shout out to Maddie Jessam, because he has a router and uh, the know how. Yeah. We tackled that, and I think it looks pretty pretty legit if you ask me. Oh man, it turned out wicked. So so nice. It turned out wicked. And then yeah, the yeah, control cavity awesome. on the back. I lost that years ago, so I just made another control cavity out of the, the material that I had from the, from the pick guard. So eh, it all worked. Yeah. And, uh, so what's the original left? And obviously, uh, on the... I need an all new gut. 
So fresh pots got 500k CTS pots and orange drops. Fresh pot. Fresh pot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I got orange drop capacitors. Um, so that's pretty much the best as you can get, in my opinion. Um, there's lots of opinions yeah. out there, though. And with the pickups, I went with DiMarzio uh, PAF 36 anniversaries. So they're an old school pickup, obviously, PAF. And they got lots of clarity in the buildup, like really good for edge breakup stuff. And, you know, when you, when you dial back your volume, it cleans right up. And, yeah, same with the tone. It goes. Tone bots are clean awesome. The dirty and dirty like that. Yeah. And then if you're playing Tony, I mean, you want to roll your tone back, right? Gives you that fuzzy effect, but uh, oh yeah. no, extremely happy. Don't ask me all why I went with uh, a covered pickup and an uncovered pickup, I just did it. It's no particular reason, I just thought it would well, look just one of those, one of those uh, random decisions that add to the character of it. Yeah, I think so. I tend to like it, definitely. Well, yeah. that whole process, what would you say was your favorite part to do or most satisfying part? And what would you say was your least satisfying, your part <laughs> that you were cursing and swearing? Well, we'll start with the worst, I guess, was the amount of sanding. Um, and also, I did a new graph tech nut. Because the one that was in it was chipped. Yeah. I think that is a really good guitar mod for anyone that's looking to get, you know, has tuning problems. And just overall it gives it more sustain, everything. It's Graph Tech Nut, look them up, wicked. Uh, but yeah. I had a white one bought originally. And that's kind of a painful process because mine, my nut was cracked before. So someone repaired it. I won't mention who, but the, the guitar shop isn't open anymore. I'll say that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they just slapped some paint yeah. down her and said, here you go. When I took the nut, <laughs> it was a bit of a mess under there. So you have to sand it down. Sandpaper is very fine, uh, technical thing to do. And I didn't have much to work with because it was already sanded and dug out by somebody else. So I had to get creative on it and I had to go get another nut, which was a bit of a worry for me because I ordered all my parts online before this COVID really took effect. And uh, yeah, here I did, I screwed up the nut. I can't really finish the guitar. So I called up Long McQuaid and Sydney and it's kind of a specific thing. They're like, oh, I don't know, look in the back. And sure enough, they had one. So I bolted over to Sydney, did like the debit through the door and yeah, yeah. I curbside. There. but that was probably the worst because everything went relatively smooth other than that but i, I thought i was going to be at a standstill i was pretty worried about that yeah. but it ended up working out well, Long mcquade and sydney for the curbside pickup big time even the day big time yeah. yeah heroes uh and then the best part was probably pretty obvious is when you know, I wired up all the electronics. I had it sitting there. And it's just a matter of putting the pickups in, which is easy. Four screws each. I was waiting for them for a while, too. Yeah. So the day they came straight in the guitar. And then I had my wire harness already built. I put that in. It's just got to connect the wires, right? So connect them wires. Yeah. And then pretty much the guitar comes together. Then you just put your knobs on string her up and hope it works when you plug it in <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah. enough first strum she was good to go so it was all teeth so that was a pretty pretty yeah. awesome moment for me there because you know i put a put a lot of effort into it a lot of time which i didn't mind but you know it's good to get something in the end i was ready for it yeah i was 
hovered over it for a week. I was ready to play it. <laughs> Definitely. Hell yeah. Speaking of playing, we're going to get back into the guitar. Yep. I appreciate you show, showing us that, uh, that and taking us through that step, man. Step by step. That's a, that's a cool project to take on. And uh, you definitely took your time with it and did it right. You know, anybody yeah. could uh, take a guitar apart and, you know, slap some paint on it, put it back together, and it looks like a different thing. But you did, you did like, the real deal, the full Monty. Yeah. Yeah. Chipping off that uh, mirror was mission. Anyone yeah, who's the feeling only, the only thing that's original on the guitar is uh, the saddle and the tuners. Everything else is brand new. So, yeah, it was, it was a full-on mission, full-on overhaul. Rock on. If you're feeling the if you're feeling the SG Brody's SG, throw up the horn emojis. <laughs> Put them in the comments. Put mm -hmm. as many as you want. Rock and roll, baby. <laughs> Deadly man. Well, our next portion of the guitar show tonight, on Thursday night live from Cape Breton Island. Uh, we're going to be talking about Mr. Randy Rhodes, one of my all-time favorite guitar players. Uh, just crazy unique style. Um, he has that neoclassical heavy metal, you know, he's like Mozart uh, met friggin' Megadeth. I don't know. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a ripper, and um, Randy Rhodes was, was quite the guy. He was born in Santa Monica, California. 1956. He's uh, known for his signature Jackson polka dot guitars. And um, he played with Quiet Riot up until 76. Got hired on the spot like that. Ozzy, uh, he plugged in the guitar, didn't even play for Ozzy yet. He was warming up and he, Ozzy hired him on the spot. He said, fucking hell, that guy is wicked. <laughs> we want him. <laughs> I read a story that Randy was actually kind of bummed out because he was like, I didn't even play for you. It was just, you know, he was messing up a little, little, little something crazy that he would do. So his fingers can stretch from the friggin' first fret to the 12. <laughs> <laughs> Hit songs like Crazy Train, Mr. Cow Crowley, Flying High Again. Oh, there's a ton. The Blizzard of Oz album and The Diary of a Madman, which I'm actually going to right now play a song off of both of those albums and kind of conjoin them, conjoin them into one. So uh, this is going to be a song that's uh, very close to my heart um, called D that uh, my wife actually walked down the aisle to. And uh, so it was a part of our wedding. And the second song I'm going to do is called Di Diary of a Madman. So here we go. Thank you. 
don't watch me die another day. Hopeless situation and this price I have to pay. Diary of a man man walk the line another day entries of confusion dear diary I'm here to stay Majestic chords. Nice. People are loving it. Comments, loving it. <coughs> Jordan Campbell says, Brody, holy buddy, it's been a minute. Brody, holy buddy, it's <laughs> been a minute. <laughs> It has, Jared. Jared. Jared says, hey, boys. What's up, buddy? It's a minute for everyone, really. Yeah, it's true. We're all, uh, we're all here stuck in quarantine. and uh, Strangers in our own town. You know, we're strangers in our own town. We're trying to keep ourselves busy. We're trying to keep ourselves from going mad. Kelly said, great job on the guitar. I love it. It's unique to you, Brody. Unique, unique New York. I agree. Yeah. It is. Cheers to that, indeed. It is definitely a unique SG. When I think of uh, Gibson SGs, I definitely don't think of chocolate brown with cream. It's usually a bright cherry red, like what that was, or a white is what I usually think of. I mean, you get SGs in tons and tons and tons of different colors, oh, but you don't see them like that. Too. Yeah, yeah, she's one of a kind. She's one of a kind. Yeah, she's back on the back on the scene with the big dog. Yeah, well, I'm happy to see you. You got her back in uh, back in action, man. I love that guitar. I got I have history, personal history with that guitar. <laughs> yeah, I've written songs um, actually back when uh, back when me and my dad and sister. I played in a little band project we called Devolution. I uh, actually wrote some songs on that guitar. And there you went. Okay, well, I think it's about time we move on to our next uh, guitarist that we're going to be highlighting. Um, this next guy that we're doing is uh, Mr. Zach Wild. This, this guy is from New Jersey, born in 1967. One of his uh, big heroes actually was Randy Rhodes, the guy that we just uh, we just talked uh, we're just talking about, and um, he was good pals with Dimebag Daryl, who was a guitarist for Pantera that we highlighted on another show. Um, Zach Wild plays in Black Label Society. He had an original um, a solo album called Book of Shadows in 1994. He played in a band called Pride and Glory. And this is all before um, he started up with Ozzy. Um, Ozzy Osbourne and him had a pretty good run up until 2007. They did the Black Rain uh, album, which is one of my favorite ones by him, too. Brody's back. Back. Technical difficulty. Uh, back. back in action. Um, I was just telling them about uh, Zach Wilde and how he kind of plays a role into uh, all these guys we're talking about tonight. Uh, this guy in particular kind of has something in common with all of them. That's as true. As he sang in a band they played in at one point or another. That's a cool read. Trust me, I'm Dr. Ozzy. 
Uh, people write into them basically say whatever they got going on. You can use your imagination, and uh, he <laughs> yeah. basically tells them better. And it's a lot of uh, just like you know, drug use and uh, parody. This was a good book. Um, this uh, this this is a really good read. If you ever get your hands on this, Zach Wild bringing metal to the children. That was a really good really good book. Uh, really funny. It's got a lot of um, Viking references in it. A lot of cool rock and roll uh, stories from back in the back in the day, and uh, just really good read. Um, bringing metal to the children, man. Zach Wild. I had a I had a chance to see him quite a few times. Actually, I saw him play with Black Label Society. I seen him with uh, play guitar for Ozzy Osbourne. And uh, I actually got to see him just solo on his own, an, an evening with Zach Wild. Um, That's true. Really cool. Uh, that would have been the cool one. Thanks. Open up the tickets for that one. I went to went to that one with Kev, our buddy Kev. Yeah, it was a good night. Unfortunately, I was not there. Hello, <laughs> no, you can't make them all. You've seen Black Label, though. Yeah, yeah. From what I remember. I'm some kick-ass kind of We've been to some kick-ass concerts together. So, uh, speaking of Zach Wild, um, you got another Ripper tune for us or what? Yeah, actually, uh, I'm going to go with an acoustic Zach Wild. Ooh, I like nice, it. Nice, nice, nice. People love the acoustics. It's a, it's a good, um, it's a good mix, you know. You get a little bit of the electric ripping rock and roll stuff, and then you get a little bit of the acoustic in there, and it, you know, adds another little flavor. And uh, I feel like the acoustic shines through a little more, like uh, through with the audio. So I'm very uh, excited to hear what you got here for us, bud. BLS or solo Zach Wild? It is BLS off my favorite album, and it's the. Ooh. Self-titled track. So this is off of the Blessed Hell Ride. Nice. This song is the Blessed Hell Ride. Take your away, buddy. Oh, 
soft side and also a very very heavy side exactly you get either heaven or hell with him right yeah big time it's funny you say that because uh heaven and hell is a band that tony iomi was also in <laughs> well was still dio. dio yeah dio sabbath which i and you know love. what else these uh yeah dio sabbath is wicked too and uh um also oh shit what was i gonna say oh uh zach sabbath you right know zach sabbath yeah he tours it's just zach wild which is basically zach wild i don't know if it's black label society but i think it's like another band that goes with zach wild and they just do black sabbath shows <laughs> and he does it's pretty cool he does justice for sure yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, he would know, right? He's been hanging out with the boss for years and years. I'm sure he spent many moon, or many times with Tony Iommi as well. Well, you can hear his influence in his music extremely. Yeah, totally. Especially totally, his vocal. Totally. Well, maybe you'll hear that through this song because uh, this is this is a pretty heavy sound. And, uh, <laughs> this is a black heavy song. This, the one I'm going to do is called 13 Years of Grief, and uh, and uh, I hope you really enjoy the homemade special effects and the guitar tricks. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
sticking around with us uh. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that because uh you know, we, we can get pretty heavy on this show sometimes but uh you know we have a soft side too just like mr zach wild had what did you think of that one brody pretty ripper pretty ripper but that's what you get when you get zach's you know, out of it <laughs> well that's it right long time since i played that song long ass time you know what it's almost time for What's it almost time for, Des? I think it's almost time for the Wacky Guitar of the Week! Wacky, wacky, wild guitar of the week! Woohoo! Wacky! Somebody's getting wacky in here! <laughs> Check it out, guys. We have our own Wacky Guitar of the Week backdrop and Wacky Guitar of the Week logo. Like wow. We're big time here. Shout out, Ripple Effects. Shout out, Ripple Effects for the sweet sweet effects. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. Keep it in. What I do you got it. for us this week, Dill? The guitar show. What do we have for us this week on the weekly wacky weird guitar? Um, this week is a, is a very fitting specimen. This is a baby Taylor, which I acquired. Actually, Brody, you were with me. I was. We picked this up. Down in LA. This bad boy came from the Sunset Strip in LA. Sam Ash. Music <laughs> uh, in, in instruments. I think it's right on the top there by the first engraving. This uh, this guitar here, actually, the bottle cap thing, 
was inspired by uh, Zach Wild. Yeah. It was inspired by Zach Wild. So uh, it's very fitting that I'm showing this guitar on this episode. And uh, and also this this bad boy, this this part here was inspired by you. Because mm -hmm. you have a baby Taylor, which is actually sitting right here beside me. Same yeah. guitar, different. Mahogany edition. Different finish. He's rocking that a Pirate Jenny sticker. That one came from Newfoundland. About that. Uh, yeah, uh, and I remember. George Street. I remember seeing it on there. Yeah, and it's also got LA on there. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I saw. I, I thought I was inspired by that carbon, uh, carbon the place that you had the guitar in. So I took mine all around the world, and friggin', she's got LA, CB, Italy, Cuba, Switzerland, all through friggin' uh, Europe, Austria, Greece. Friggin', I started working the back. Took this on the trip to the states, so she's been through eighteen or so states, <laughs> and I uh, wrote some wrote some good songs with this guitar, man. They're handy guitar. This little thing. Yeah, man, she's uh, she's quite the ripper. Love it. She ain't got man. Yeah. This little bad boy, if you're uh, thinking about getting a small guitar, I mean, you can see what this thing's like. I mean, it's, it, she's just a little baby. Especially it fits. A the best thing about it, it fits in the overhead compartment to the plane. That's all you need to know. So she's a carry-on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Done deal. That's all you need to know. Baby no. Taylor, So I use that so many times. Uh, actually, I got a funny little story about that guitar. Um, when, uh, when this uh, COVID thing started... Uh, really taking effect um we were we were still up in work up in up in ontario and uh i was actually going to leave that guitar in in my in my room up at camp and i said ah oh, whatever we'll be back and something came over me when i was sitting in the airport said go get that guitar go get that guitar and i did ran and got it when i came back with the guitar they almost didn't let me on the plane <laughs> um because there was a winter clothing effect in and i didn't have boots anyways Needless to say, I had to run back and forth to camp three times just to get that friggin' guitar to the airport. But I'm really glad I did because uh, I'm here right now, and that that's my little baby. That'd be sitting up in a closet up in uh, northern Ontario doing nothing. What a sin! Exactly, sin. Sin, yeah, yeah. So we took her home, baby T. Um, yeah, so that's our wacky guitar of the week. Um, you know, we're coming, we're coming pretty close to the end of our show here. Uh, you know, I got one final song to kind of close it out. One, uh, one Zach Wild song, Ozzy Osbourne song. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna play on this bad boy right here, the twelve string. Mm, nice. Very nice. <laughs> well, Brody, I appreciate you coming on the show tonight, man, and showing us the. The SG and playing some tunes. Yeah. Rick Thanks for having me. Friggin' buddy. Sabbath. Yeah, man. You're awesome. I'd love to do it again. Anytime, buddy. But, uh, you take care of yourself there during this quarantine. And uh, if we don't see you on the, we don't see you on the flip side. We'll see you on the live stream. Yeah, I might have to build another guitar to get on here, I guess. But see how long this quarantine. <laughs> Pretty bored. Uh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> right on, buddy. All right. Well, I'm going to close out the show tonight, guys, with a uh, song that actually means a lot to me. Um, it holds a significant uh, place in my heart, this tune. But uh, this is called too. Mama, I'm Coming Home. Yeah. All right, brother. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, and, everybody. Uh, Much love. Rock and roll. Yeah, man, you can stick around, hang out in the green room, and uh, we'll chat after the show, or uh, or we'll catch you later. Stick me in the green room, then, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to the green room. All right, brother, we'll see you in there. Have a drink. Get comfy. Rock on. Way ahead of the game, bro. <laughs> right on, guys. That was Brody Bootlier. Good pal of mine.
and uh, hopefully we'll get them back on the show again. So tonight we're going to close out with uh, Mama, I'm Coming Home. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Times are strange, times are change. Here I come, but I ain't the same. Now I'm coming home. Time goes by, it seems to creep. Could have been a better friend to me. Now I'm coming home. Took me in, you told me how, yeah, you had me in the towns, yeah. Lost and found, turn around by the fire in your eyes. You made me cry, you told me us, I can't stand to say goodbye. Now I'm coming home. I could be right, I could be wrong. It hurt so bad, it's been so long. Now I'm coming home. Selfish run out for the long, but I'm going to Yeah, but I'm gonna take this heart of stone. I just got to let it all. Seeing your face a thousand times Every day you leave me in the yeah And I don't care about the sunshine, no Because mama, mama, I'm coming home Coming home, it's a guitar show. The fucking guitar show. That's it for us on the guitar show. So thank you all for tuning in tonight. Thanks again uh, for Ripple Effects for being awesome. And uh, we'll see you next Thursday on the guitar show. Stay safe, love, peace, and rock and roll.